Let us pray to our incarnate Lord, who has brought us out of darkness and into his own marvellous light. Christ born for us, Son of God given for us, help us to know you, to worship and to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wonderful Counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the Church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the spirit of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide the leaders of the nations and bring in your kingdom of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all of your children, bless our families and renew our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, you bring reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give to all who suffer your gift of wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, full of the Spirit, hear our prayer, receive our praises, fill our lives. Amen. Nativity plays are enjoyed by children and adults alike. I'm sure you've seen one, if not many. Maybe some of you remember when you were very young being in a nativity play as an angel or a shepherd or even a donkey, and then graduating the next year to being Mary or Joseph. As a teacher, I know that school nativity plays are a cultural treasure. They give children permission to have fun as they learn by dressing up as Mary, Joseph, the innkeeper, angels, kings, shepherds, donkeys and sheep. They give adults license to coo, moist-eyed with pride, as a way the manger is sung with the accompaniment of discordant triangles. Those nativity plays remind us that there's something very special about coming together as a family and a community to hear the story told again and again. And what a wonderful story it is. God chose to reveal himself in human flesh. God chose to do this in the birth of a human baby. God chose to do this in order to love the world back into a whole relationship with himself. In other words, to save the world from itself and to save the world from selfishness and sin. Nativity plays remind us that baby Jesus is God's Christmas present to everyone. God incarnate, that means God showing himself in human flesh through a real person and starting as all real persons start, as a baby. At Christmas we are given the most amazing gift of all time, the original Christmas present, God's gift of himself, Jesus Christ. But how do we respond? When Christmas is over and the decorations are down and the Christmas cards are replaced by credit cards and bills, do we remember God's gift? Do we say thank you to God? Do we give God's gift a special place in our lives? Or do we forget in the busyness of our important daily routine and find no space for God in our lives and our hearts. It's so easy to play the role of the innkeeper of Bethlehem. No room, no space, full up, go away. And continue through the year without realising that although we've changed from the nativity play costume into our everyday clothes, we are still unconsciously behaving like the innkeeper. Some people remain like the innkeeper all their lives and don't realise that's what they're doing. What I mean is, not wanting to respond to the knock on the door. Go away, we're full. 
not wanting to accommodate a simple request. Go away, it's late. Not hearing God when God himself calls. Go away, I'm busy. We don't give it a thought, but subconsciously, unwittingly, we are doing just what the innkeeper did, not in fun as in the play, but as the innkeeper of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And that was to close the door in the face of God, as God offered the greatest gift of all time. Today is the annual reminder and celebration of that day long ago. Today is the second chance to make the right response to the knock on the door. God still knocks on the door. It's the door of our hearts. Will we repeat the lines from the play? Full up, no room, not now, go away, I'm busy. Try the vicar. There's an old Celtic expression, thin places. It refers to spiritually thin places. The Celtic church was referring to the thin space between heaven and earth, which in some places seemed to be wafer thin. Sometimes it seemed that heaven and earth touched and kissed. Celtic spirituality encouraged people to visit thin spaces. Maybe an island such as Iona or Holy Island off the Northumberland coast Maybe a particular mountain, or a particular church or cathedral, where prayer has been offered for centuries. But it's not only places that can be thin. Times and seasons can also be thin. And Christmas is one of those times. At Christmas, even those who never step inside a church show goodwill and care for the underprivileged, the hungry, the homeless, the lonely, and children and the elderly. They are responding, whether they know it or not, to the thinness between earth and heaven. They may sense a real presence of God. They may feel their heart strangely warmed as they hear again the Christmas story, a story that speaks to their need, but a story they have still not taken to their hearts. When that happens, they are experiencing a thin place. Heaven and earth have touched in their heart, and they feel it. They want to live more like what God intends. If only it could last all the year round. We can use those moments in this Christmas thin place, not just to feel God's love, but to recognise God's love, and so take it with us into the new year. Christmas gives us the opportunity to make room in our hearts to welcome God by welcoming Jesus into our lives. At the heart of life lies the mystery of God. The knock on the innkeeper's door is the knock by God on the door of our hearts. Let's not fall back on the Nativity play script, no room. Let's open the door invite God to come in, even if it does mean a few adjustments and a place for Jesus, not only at the table, but in our home and in our lives.
May the Father who has loved the Eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things heaven, earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.